Okay, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Axel 72 video, and in today's video, I'm back with another interview, and I'm here with Tracy Weber. Tracy, how are we? I'm great, thank you very much. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for coming on the channel. No problem. Thank you for the invite. Nice one. So am I right in saying you're now moving to Super Featherweight, am I right in saying? And you are... I am, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Featherweight, Super Featherweight. Mm -hmm. Gradually get to the Super Featherweight, because mm -hmm. I'm coming up from Bantamweight. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. So it's good to see that you are... Is that going to be probably the weight where you're going to settle at? Yeah, definitely. Super feather. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. And so if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed, please do so like the video if you do need like the video. And let's get straight into it. So I'm going to start off with a question which you always like to start off with. Why did you start boxing? Got into boxing because it was a bit unruly as a teenager. Okay. A typical boxing story, really. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was trying to change my life around and do something positive and constructive. I got kicked out of school, I had a few problems as a teenager, as a troubled teenager and then yeah, 19 years of age, I went through, you know, a bit of a rough time with certain things that I was doing and whatnot and I turned to God, I turned to God, started going to mass and I, uh, yeah, went to the boxing gym, what I should have done a lot of years previously before that because I've always been a bit of a fighter mm -hmm. so I should have went when I was a whole lot younger really you know when I was a teenager but back in my day back in the 90s I remember going to a boxing gym I got brought up in Turkey mm -hmm. and I went to a boxing gym there I was about 13 years of age and we wasn't allowed to train really? so I got wow. kicked out of the gym practically wow. um, so yeah and then I ended up on the streets and whatnot getting into trouble and then yeah it was time to change my life around at 19 years of age mm. that's great to hear that you've managed to do that and so would you kind of say for anybody who might be in that situation now that it, boxing is a good place to turn to 100 percent. get into sport follow your passion if you've got passion in sport follow it i love boxing a lot of people love boxing but whatever your sport is and especially if you're going through a rough time when you're a teenager hanging around got nothing to do not really academic, get into sport, follow your passion, do something positive and constructive, change my life around. Mm -hmm. Definitely, indeed, that's great. And uh, so just to kind of speak about your amateur background, I don't know how much of an amateur background you had, but what would you? What was your biggest achievement from the amateurs? Um, biggest achievement? I won, I won um, the novices and novice championships. Um, Boxed for England. Wow. Um, I had about 19 amateur fights, mm -hmm. but unfortunately I was going through, I had undiagnosed ADHD okay. up until the age of 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. So I got into boxing when I was 19, sleep problems started coming out. So I had a very rocky time with my amateur career. I had years out of the gym, set years out of the gym, um, but I always tried to stick with it. I always tried to be in the gym, even when I was suffering with sleep problems and anxiety. Um, so yeah, my amateur career was very off and on. And in 10 years, I only had like 19 fights, something like that. Um, come back from three, three, four years out, and then I fought the best in the country, who didn't even match my record. And I think I was like 34 then, 33. So yeah, I come back, I was like, no, I'm made for the pros. And I went through hard times with the undiagnosed ADHD and whatnot. Couldn't be in the gym, couldn't really fight. And I was fighting when I wasn't at my best neither. Mm. Um, so yeah, come back, fought the best in the country. Who didn't, you know, who's way more experienced than me. You know, and I put up some good fights and close fights and I won a few. And like, um, I boxed for England, got picked to box for England. I boxed them, um, Nina Hughes in um, the Elite mm -hmm. Championships. She beat me fair and square, you know, she's a great boxer, mm. very experienced, but um, I got noticed, the box for England in the Three Nations, so I was on the England talent squad, I was like, I'm not cut out for the amateurs no more, I'm a bit too old, I sit on my feet, pick my shots and, you know, I feel a bit more tough and I wear, it's time to go to the pros, so I turned over, I was like in the gym for about two years trying to, you know, get good enough to turn pro and get my strength up and that and um yeah and then my debut was there march 2020 and then national lockdown mm -hmm. and i've had free falling through debut since then and then finally i just had my debut last week mm -hmm. yes indeed you did and i mean your whole kind of story is very inspirational and uh, i mean i know your debut didn't go quite to plan but 
I'm sure, I mean, you've been, like you said, you've been through so much already that I'm sure this kind of little setback won't be anything to you. Yeah, definitely. And I was very weight-drained before this fight as well. The the week leading up to the fight, I was very weight-drained. Like I say, I haven't boxed for four years previously, and that was the the weight that I used to fight at, and I used to make it no problem. But this time round, yeah, I found it very hard to make bantam weight, and I got matched at Superfly. Mm-hmm. She was a Superfly, so I couldn't be over 54 kg. Okay. So I was struggling. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, was what it was at the end of the day. I still fought. Um, she was an experienced girl. She's had five fights, um, one two, one KO. And she was a southpaw, mm. you know, for your debut. That's a bit hard, mm. you know. You're just switching over from amateur to pro. Mm. It's a big change at the end of the day. And four years out, mm. and yeah, weight drained and a southpaw, and was what it was. Like it was a good fight. Um, yeah, her experience took over. It was a close fight as well, and I got a lot of good feedback. So I just take the positives from it. Mm. Indeed, yes, we have to do. And uh, so, would you say that coming off this defeat, going into your next fight, your mindset has changed at all? even more determined and I'm even more determined than you can get anyway like the last four years have been hard very hard I've just wanted to fight more than anything and you know Covid times was hard for a lot of people and it was no different for me it was hard in my personal life as well so my, my determination has been second to none so this is going to build me even more I'm going to concentrate on building my mass and my strength up eventually get up to 59 kg and mentally, I'm just on a whole nother level. And I just can't wait to get back out there. Like, I will literally fight tomorrow, next mm. week. I can't wait to get back out. I absolutely loved it. Mm. But you need to do it the right way. You know? I know what way I need to be now. Mm. That's good to hear. And so do you have a possible date of when you might be back fighting? I'm not too sure. I'm okay. not too sure. There's going to be a few changes. So I'm not too sure about that yet. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I suppose when you are back fighting, as it is your first year at the moment, are you wanting to, when you get the ball back rolling, have quite an active year? Very, very active. Mm-hmm. Literally, I would fight every week. I absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I felt at home in that ring. And I found it quite easy, to be quite honest with you, even though she was a southpaw. But, I don't know, it just felt like home, you know. I felt I belonged in there and... Yeah, I can't wait to get back out. I just can't wait to be 100% because it was like 60 70% in that ring. So 100% me, you know, eating, feeling good before the fight. There's going to be no stopping me. I just can't wait to get back out. That's brilliant. And uh, so, I mean, you went in with a tough test, like you said. And uh, so I suppose is that your mindset going into the professional side of things, always wanting the tough tests? Yeah, I do. To be honest with you, I do want a tough test, to be quite honest with you. I want a legacy. Mm. I want legacy fights. I want to be in great fights. But I think I've been a bit of, you know, running before you can walk, Mm. crawling before you walk, whatever the saying is. So I need to hold myself back a little bit, you know, and have a bit of a warm up, you know, just for a support. I'm going up in weight. It would be nice to get you know, a fair fight, because that fight was 70-30, really. She was experienced and a KO on a record in Southport. So, you know, it was a 70-30 fight. Mm. So it'd be nice to get a 50-50 fight, have a bit of a warm-up. And then, yeah, you know, there's no stopping me. Mm. But at the end of the day, you still need the backing. Mm. So, you know, if I'm in big fights, decent fights against experienced girls, people don't always see it in that way and they're going to look at me and think, you know, she's a loser, she's got nothing but losses on her record. So you need to, you know, you need to be wise in what you're doing because you do need a backing in this sport. I'm a self-funded athlete Mm. and, you know, I need backing in that. So it would be nice to get some 50-50 fights as well. But Mm. when it's time to step up and the time is right, let's go, I'm ready. Let's go indeed, that's great. And uh, so just for anybody who's not watched you fight before, I might come and watch this next fight of yours. What would you say makes yourself interesting as a fighter? I'm unique, I'm unique. I've got very good footwear, very good movement. And because the girl was so short, she was like four foot 11 and I'm five foot eight. The girl was tiny. Yeah. So the best of me wasn't seen. So I want a bigger opponent as well, a taller opponent. So I can do all my movement, ducking underneath for the you know, showing off a little bit with a movement and footwork. But I always used to be a hit a mover and counter puncher, back foot counter puncher. But I do come on the front foot when I have to and when the time's right and I see it opening. But yeah, movement and footwork, hit a movement. Mm. 
That's brilliant. And uh, yeah, I saw the photos of you and your opponent. Big, big height difference. That was crazy yeah. how that managed to end up happening. But um, you, yeah, and uh, so I mean, you are right at the beginning of your career at the moment. And so, how far do you believe you can go? I believe I can go all the way. I wouldn't be in this sport if I didn't believe I could go all the way. You know, you need that end goal of having them belts over your shoulder and around your waist. So yeah, I do believe I can be a world champion. And I am getting on now, you know, I know that I'm 39 years of age and I know, you know, the time's against me, but that's that's going to be my legacy, retiring a proud champion and I'll make sure I do retire a very proud champion. Mm, that's brilliant. And so what would you say currently is your, your motivation for boxing? My motivation for boxing, it's my everything. Boxing's my everything. It keeps me focused. I love it. If I'm not in the gym, I start getting moody, to be quite honest with you, when I've been working like four or five days straight because mm. I only work part-time to be in the gym. Yeah. But when I am grafting, you know, four or five days a week, I'm like, oh, I need to get to the yeah. gym. Mentally, I start slipping because of the ADHD. I need that focus mm. and I need to be doing something physical mm. and something what stimulates me and something that I enjoy. Boxing's my passion. And, yeah, it's just, I need it. It's like I'm born to fight and... I need to train. I love boxing. It's my absolute passion. So I just do it for the love of the sport, to be quite honest with you. Mm. And fighting is just a bonus, in mm. all honesty. That's amazing. And uh, so I'll leave with this final question, which I always like to ask. You've got a little bit of a platform here. Would you like to shout anything out? Yeah, this is if I can remember all the sponsors now. Okay. I want to shout out Honey Jo Boxer. She's a little, um, how old is she? I think she's about eight, nine, something like that. She's been through surgery on her legs and um, she wants to be a boxer. She's in my boxing gym, Jim Egan's boxing gym. Just come back from surgery on her legs, wow. still training. Wow. She's an absolute little warrior, so I want to shout her out. You know, as long as all being well with her health um, and her feet, you know, she'll be a little champion one day. So I want to shout her out. I want to shout out Acoustic Mayhem for helping me. I want to shout out Michael Maisie at the CIP Project for his help. Um, Declan. I can't remember the name of his nutritional company. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Declan, my friend in Ireland, he's helped me a lot with nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, and Elite Pro Gum Shields. Thank you for the free gum shields. Mm -hmm. More than appreciated. So that's about it. <laughs> okay. Nice one. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for doing this. And uh, maybe a little bit further along down the line, we can come have you back on the channel. Yeah, most definitely. I really appreciate the interview and your time. Thank you very much, Anne. So if you are new around here and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you need like it. And thanks for watching.